You may have heard of Twitch Plays Pokemon, but I created Twitch Plays Pokemon Showdown and our goal is to make it up the random battles ladder on Pokemon Showdown using only input from Twitch chat. Pokemon Showdown is a competitive Pokemon website where you can play against other people, not just AI. Random battles is a format where you get a random team of good Pokemon and try to win. There is no team building. I can give instructions and ideas about what plays to make, and I can try and coordinate the decision making, but I can't touch anything. Everything is up to chat. I set up two modes. One is chaos mode where the Twitch chat gets to move the mouse by typing in directions like up, down, left and right, and can click on buttons by typing click. The second mode is command mode where instead of moving the cursor, chat could type in what move they wanted to use. For example, M1 would mean to use the first move slot, Dynamax would mean to Dynamax the Pokemon, and so on and so forth. I always knew that coordinating large groups of people would be tough, but I really did underestimate just how chaotically awful a Twitch chat can be. You had the people trying their best, you had the people trying to sabotage, and you had everything in between. Beating other human players is extremely difficult, much more than beating an AI, and it's even tougher when a hive mind has to work together to get it done. This is the story of Twitch playing Pokemon Showdown. We start off optimistically enough and we decide that we would be better off getting some practice games in on the unrated ladder. That way we can get at least a little bit of coordination before we play for any actual rating point. But any optimism we had was immediately crushed in game 1. It's hard to beat another person when there's a lot of people making their decision. Even ignoring the people trying to sabotage, which is inevitable in large groups, People often have different strategies and there are players of all skill levels trying to make their moves. An important detail is that command mode picks the command of whoever says it first and at the right time, right as the turn starts. Maybe in the future I'll add a democracy mode where people vote on the move to take, but for now we enjoy the chaos. Our first few games go absolutely terribly. From using Nasty Plot at the absolute worst time, to switching randomly again and again and again, there was clearly a lot of work to be done. Sometimes through sheer luck, we would switch out and end up with a type advantage, but then throw it all away as we use Defog even though there are no hazards like Stealth Rock on the field. Dynamax is one of the key mechanics of Generation 8 and using it properly is incredibly important if not the most important thing in the game. But all it takes is one person to sneak in a random Dynamax in the early game and it can be wasted. Potentially not being able to reliably use the most important aspect of the game is huge. But there was a shimmer of hope in game 3. We successfully managed to coordinate Arcanine to Dynamax and use a non-fire type move versus Flash Fire Heatmore. Of course we did end up getting destroyed by Shell Smash Omastar on the next turn, but it was the idea of it which was important. We set out to Dynamax the right Pokemon and use the right moves, and we did it. That itself was something to be proud of. A small victory in the grand scheme of things, but it was still a victory. We would still lose many games after that though, even losing to people who were watching the stream and trying to lose on purpose to get our first win, but we couldn't even beat them. But then, finally we had some magic going on. We were making the right plays. One in particular that stands out is Eternatus vs Crobat. Eternatus beats Crobat, but it does require some thinking to do it. You want to beat Crobat with Dynamax Cannon while also recovering to keep yourself at high health. You have to know when to attack and when to recover. By a miracle, with some random flamethrowers in the middle, Twitch Chat was able to roost at the right times and attack at the right times and they didn't mess up too badly living with 1% HP. Could we have lived with more than that if we played perfectly? Definitely, but these were the small victories we needed. Undoubtedly, we were making progress. Twitch Chat Dynamax's Cofagrigus at the right time to stop Dynamax Mesprit and it looks like we might actually have a chance. Cofagrigus gets toxic and eventually faints while trying to outplay Mesprit and Corsola with the combination of Shadow Ball and Body Press, but we reach an endgame where it's Zygarde 10% versus 2 Steel type Pokemon. All we have to do is coil for the attack and defense boost and we win. We have enough power to one-hit KO everything with 1000 arrows after a coil boost because Cobalion was damaged earlier. Instead, this happens. This is a tricky play. We'll have to go to Zygarde, M2, then M4 I think might be the winning play. 
No, not outrage, not outrage. Not outrage. Who clip? Throwers in chat. We snatch a defeat from the jaws of victory and continue our hunt for our first win. After that, we had a few moments of our own. Some of them were good, like when we brave birded a pseudo wudo with choice banded halucha as they went to Gardevoir. I'm still not convinced that they didn't brave bird because they thought pseudo wudo was a grass type, but I'll let them have that one. Other moments were not as good, like when we didn't use Stone Edge versus Moltres, or when we used Grass Knot versus a Magirna. We still weren't actually winning any games. But on a whim, we decided, you know what? Let's go ahead and get a rated game. We've had enough practice. We start our first rated game with the Zoroark, and there are firmly two camps in the chat. Some of chat wanted to go to Kyurem to match up well versus Moltres Galar, but others wanted to stay in and Nasty Pot, expecting the opponent to switch because they wouldn't know it's Zoroar and would obviously switch out Moltres Galar from Akurum. The Nasty Potters win and it works perfectly. They Nasty Pot on the switch and beat the Seeking coming in. Later in the game, the opponent loses Moltres Galar to Akurum. This is the bottom of the ladder after all and it's looking really good. We have a good lead and we have good Pokemon. Some of their best offensive Pokemon like Archeops is completely beaten by our Pokemon like Quagsire. All we need to do is not screw it up. And trust me, Twitch Chat's god-given talent is to screw things up. If there's a way to choke an endgame, they'll definitely find it. But thankfully, the opponent forfeits early and we win. After an hour of struggle, we did it. We got our first win and that too in our first rated game. We were incredibly happy. We won our first game! All we needed were the stakes of the ladder, actual rating points on the line and we got it done. Happy. This would be short lived though. I was planning on ending stream because I thought going 1-0 would be a really good end to a YouTube video, but Twitch chat caught me monologuing and they queued for a game while I wasn't paying attention and I hadn't stopped the code yet. Oh we, we got another one! We got another one, okay. They opened up another game, and quite predictably, we got smashed in game 2, making questionable plays like using Hyper Voice versus the Golar. I quickly stop it from there to make sure that we don't do any more damage, and we end the first chapter of Twitch Plays Pokemon at a modest 1 in 1 record overall. If you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe, because if I see a lot of new subscribers, then I know to keep making more. If there's a good response, I'll post a stream schedule too, so that you know when it's going on and when you can participate. Also, should we have democracy mode? Let me know down in the comments below.